Hey, it's Avi from JustRightMusic.com. That was intense. I'm going to do that one more time. Hey, it's Avi from JustRightMusic.com. That's way better. A piece of knowledge that you hear in many fields, not just music, is that you are your own worst critic. Stick around, because today I want to dive into that a little bit. I want to pick that apart and break that down. But I also want to challenge that and explore how we can build up our best critic because that is our best chance for inner objectivity with our music. Before we dive in, you guys know the deal. Hit the subscribe button and bell below if you're new. If you're not new, just like the video. I mean, if you're new, you can also like the video, that too. Do whatever you want, you guys are great. Feedback and critique is an invaluable resource to have as an artist. Our eyes and ear may easily miss something that another trained pair of eyes and ears may not. Trained being the operative word there. I think for exactly that same reason, that same inevitable obliviousness to parts of our own music, these blind spots is maybe a more easy, best way to what are words. These blind spots are ultimately why we're so hard on ourselves. So let's get into this and understand why this is and how we can turn it around and make it work for us. The first thing that's really important to understand, only you see you at your worst. I'm gonna say that one more time. Only you see you at your worst. Man, it is it easy to judge yourself at your worst, right? That's easy pickings. Kicking ourselves while we're down, weak. We will live every mistake that we have and ever will make. Statistically speaking, it's pretty easy to get at yourself. We never see anyone else at their worst, only ourselves. Even if you live with another musician, you may hear their mistakes and you may hear the practice and stuff, but it, it's not gonna have the same emotional weight as when you're practicing and when you're making mistakes. All we hear from other people is the result of their hard work. So in this specific case, the solution here is to refrain at all times to compare yourself to others. Now that, that sounds impossible and, and it kind of is impossible. The very least we can do is to create comparative structures or limitations for us. Compare apples to apples and oranges to oranges. To use examples from my own practice, say I'm learning a solo from a song that I really like. I should refrain from comparing the way I'm playing the solo to the way I'm hearing it, especially, especially on the studio recording, because I'm hearing all of my starts and stops and all of my sloppy mistakes, and only I am living through all the time that it takes to actually get to the point where I can play it. I don't get to see any of that from a studio recording. In fact, it's worse than that. All I hear is the perfect, perfect take that they used for the album. And worse than that, not only are we hearing the perfect take, we're also most likely hearing some edited or quantized version of it. Oh my god, this is the worst thing we can do. It's the most unfair comparison ever. It makes absolutely no sense, and yet it happens. We still do it. We can't help it. We're not putting what we're hearing in its proper context. I talk about context a lot, you guys. I think it's important. So that's the first thing I want us to understand. Only you see you at your worst. And that leads us to a second problem, and we kind of already touched on it. This applies to our actual objective skill. We're often blind to our own skill. Since progress is slow, it's pretty easy to not see or feel it, especially in small chunks. It's really easy to forget about all of the victories that we've achieved in our practice and in our writing and in our craft and in our music and all the things and focus only on what's not happening in the moment. Now I'm not saying like you have to be thinking about this stuff all at once. All you have to do is just remember that you've done all of these things it allows you to have a little bit more confidence that it's gonna happen and it's important to not let the natural frustration of not getting something turn into self-loathing. And that can happen really fast and really easily. I like using the analogy here of the myth of Sisyphus. So this is a Greek myth where this guy Sisyphus was cursed by Zeus to roll a boulder up a mountain for eternity. Every day he would get to the top of the mountain and every morning he would wake up down at the bottom with the boulder. We in our daily lives are Sisyphus. Our instrument and our practice is the boulder. The mountain is the daily journey of our lives that we climb every single day. Department of Redundancy Department much? I wanna take this to another level though, to make it more applicable. As we go on our lives, the boulder will become heavier and the mountain will get taller. But this happens so slowly that we get stronger and adapt as a result. We learn, but since we're just climbing the mountain every day and the progress is happening so slowly, 
it's hard to see, to look back and notice just how much progress we've made, how much bigger that boulder is and how much taller that mountain is that we keep climbing. It's so easy only to focus on where we are. A practical exercise for this would be to take, so take a look at your past work and notice points of progress that maybe at the time seemed really hard to you, which now you're like, oh yeah, that's easy. Really try to avoid hating on yourself here. Just remember some things that you felt were difficult and hear yourself nail it. And this is the tip of the iceberg. This is exactly where I want to start for how we can turn our worst critic into our best critic. Ugh, I hate the way that sounds. It's so gross. Everything our worst critic has to say isn't necessarily untrue or false. It helps maintain a certain honesty within ourselves about our craft, knowing that we are going to maybe tend towards hating on our music and hating on ourselves, we can actually use that as a barometer to gain some objective insights, or as objective as possible. If we know we're gonna hate on our music, just try and notice the parts that you hate a little less. Chances are, those are good parts and you're probably onto something cool. But we have to keep it in a healthy context. It's all too easy and all too common for our worst critic to just make a spiral into self-loathing and prolonged depression, at least in my case. So be very quick and very direct with your inner worst critic. Remember that the more they say to you, and it's a they, it's not you, you, you don't have to identify with this voice, the more it says, the worse you're going to feel. So have a really strict time limit on when you allow it to speak. And you can control it. You can allow it. As you do this, you're going to condition this part of you to be a little bit kinder. Try to maintain kindness and honesty with the language that you choose in your head. I know that sounds really weird, but language is powerful. The things that we say to ourselves is powerful. Are powerful? <sighs> Kindness and honesty do not have to be mutually exclusive, particularly within ourselves. In fact, it's at this exact cross-section where the inner best critic lives. Our best critic is not actually the exact opposite of our worst critic. A bad critic doesn't just say things are terrible for no reason and with no evidence, they also say that things are amazing and fantastic and the best thing ever written, also with no evidence. A good critic shares the bad with the good and will focus on the art itself rather than turning it around and attacking the artist or glamorizing the artist. So there you have it. I, I really hope that you have a better understanding of why you're so hard on yourself, maybe how you can ease up a little bit, be a little bit kinder and a little bit gentler with how you're critiquing yourself and still hold as much objectivity and truth as possible. Remember, only we see ourselves at our worst and only we have to go on our journey. This makes it difficult to see ourselves and our art clearly, but that doesn't mean it's impossible and it also doesn't mean that we shouldn't try. Now, if you're looking for some really critical tools that can make your inner critic say, whoa, that worked great, check out my free guide, Seven Ways to Write a More Effective Melody. There, I give you proven tools that you can use to workshop any melody. And like I said, just like make your inner critic be like, whoa, cool. Head to justwritemusic.com. There is also a link down in the doobly-doo. All you need to do is let me know where to send it. And if you haven't already, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and comment below with anything that resonated with you or with any reasons why you feel you're your own worst critic that I didn't mention. I'm Avi from JustWriteMusic.com, and don't forget to be awesome. Peace out.